Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got two for you today. Billy and Emily England are the extreme rollerblading duo from Birmingham, England, who are currently starring and getting through to the end of America's Got Talent as two of the biggest stars. And I'm delighted to say they join us on the phone now from Las Vegas. Guys, how are you? Oh, yeah, we're great. I mean, it's so great to like that you uh, we can like talk to people back home and let them know how we're doing. Obviously, there's a big time difference out here, so um, you know it's like it's kind of hard to like keep in touch with people because it's like when I'm awake, they're asleep, and when they're asleep, and we're awake. But yeah, no, we're doing great, and we're just so happy that we like you know we managed to like step it up and get to the end of the show right now. People accuse me of being sycophantic, Emily, but I got to tell you, I think your act is one of the most breathtakingly brilliant, beautiful, and amazing acts in the world. Congratulations! I only saw you in May. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. We've been working really hard, and we're really lucky that we get to, you know, perform together. Me and my brother, um, because a lot of people are, you know, not related and are just partners, and we get to experience together. So we really feel, you know, lucky that our mom got us into the business together. You're both from Birmingham. Tell us your story, Billy, because it's an amazing showbiz story of success. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, our mom, our mom taught us. Um, you know, when we were kids, how to skate. And we, um, you know, we just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And then when our dad died, you know, it was, it was some hard times. And, you know, like I worked, like, you know, like my sister, like, went off and, like, did some waitressing. I worked in a call center for four years, you know, kept skating on the side, like, I'm trying to keep fit and everything. Um, I worked in a call center for, like, three or four years. Like, it was really tough for us. But, you know, eventually we um, we got it together. and We went on Britain's Got Talent. And everyone remembers us from that. And, you know, we, we did we did okay, you know, but then um, we, like, we took more time. We kept working, working really hard. And eventually, like, you know, we ended up in America, in Las Vegas. And we, um, you know, we're on America's Got Talent. And, um, you know, we, we, every round now we've, like, stepped it up and stepped it up. And we've worked, like, really tirelessly to, to step it up. And the, the judges, like, and the people out here, like, really, you know, have, like, taken to that because there's always been, like, a, a distinctive, like, step up and, you know, increase in skill level. So, you know, we're just working so hard and we really want to try and make it as far as we can into the right to the end of the competition. And we just take it like day by day, like, you know, show by show. And we just, we just you know, never give up, really. And let's face it, your act is dangerous, isn't it, Emily? I mean, you both can die. Basically, you're on roller skates, Billy, and then you take Emily and you throw her around the theatre until you both stop at the end of the song. It's marvellous. Yeah, we're really trying to bring skating, like, we're kind of doing like an aerial skating act because we skate so many heights. So we've compi- combined aerial and roller skating in one, which like no one has ever done before. So it is really dangerous, yeah, because you know when you do something in the air, usually you have something to hold on to or you have a safety rope. But with the skating, it's absolutely impossible to add a safety line because it gets wrapped around my neck or his neck. We're the like we're the first people in the world to ever like hang off someone's beard. You know, whether like I'm the first person to skate with like a beard and things on stage. And, um, the thing is. Uh, it's like so dangerous. We're so scared before we go up there. I mean, we try and rehearse like to a relative degree, you know, because it's very hard to get stage time and rehearse these things like so high up. Maybe we ran it through four or five times or high up. But really, we're really terrified before we go on. We're really scared. We try our best to like be solid and like stable up there, you know, but also have the danger aspect and not try and go too crazy. But like obviously that's still like it's really, it's really tough to stay on there. You know, it's shaking. The stage is shaking like crazy. It's wobbling everywhere. It's like really tough to stay up there, so we're really trying to. Uh, I did rehearsal. I was on the floor. I actually fell off the, t- the stage when I threw my head back. So I stopped throwing my head back when I was high up because it was like too dangerous. Because I couldn't really, you know, I couldn't really guarantee that I could stay on the table. So I, you know, that that, that was it really. And let's face it, I mean, I've interviewed most magicians in the world and they do the shtick that what they do is dangerous when they disappear or chop themselves in half. And maybe it is, but in reality, the likelihood is they're not going to chop themselves in half. You really can fall off that stage if you make a wrong move or most importantly, lose concentration. And what I admire about you in Vegas, you're doing two shows a night at Absinthe at Caesars Palace, which is a phenomenal show. How do you stay focused twice nightly, five or six days a week? Because that's the skill, isn't it, Emily? Yeah, it really is, you know, and um, I work myself up, but my brother really, I, I lose control and I work myself up, and my brother talks to me and he's like, Emily, you know, I've got this, don't worry, I'm not going to, you know, we, we, we've done it a thousand times, he was telling me, how many times have we done it? We've done it a thousand times, like, we can do this, and then after, like, you know, after a massive show, he'll tell me, like, oh, I was really scared too, but <laughs> he <laughs> knows how to, like... <laughs> yeah, I don't want to tell him, I'm like, well, I didn't tell you, but I was really scared, like, before, before I go on, I'm like, yeah, I know. 
Yeah, no, I've got this afterwards. I'm like, well, I was really scared there. I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't let you know. <laughs> In the moment, like, I'm just listening to him and I'm like, well, he's got this. So if mm. I can just stay really straight and not move and just trust him, then I've got it too. So, you know, you really talk to, your, you talk to yourself and you, you convince yourself that you've got it. And then afterwards, and yeah. you watch it and you're like, what were we doing? That was just... And, on, and, and, you know, on top of that as well, like, you know, we do dedicate our lives to it. Like, we don't drink, we don't smoke, we don't go to bed too late. You know, we don't, like, walk around too much in the daytime in the sun, like, and get dehydrated before a show or anything. So we, like, definitely have, like, a strict diet and regime that we follow so that we're not like uh, dizzy or tired or overtired or you know, in the influence of any kind of, you know, like substances before we go on so that Billy we can like, yeah. Billy loves coffee and before a big show, like he won't drink coffee because he knows that it might, you know, dehydrate his muscles. Give me the jitters, make wow. me shaky, yeah, like. And so for a few days before the competition, he'll cut out coffee, he'll cut out, you know, anything that is not good for him, which is a bit, you know, it's difficult Coffee is kind of you know? What's also amazing about you both is you are both delicious, and this is obvious to anybody who sees your act. That's a big part of it as well. It's sexy and it's cute, and the guys like to look and the girls like to look, and then there's the technical brilliance, and then, of course, there's the physicality and the discipline of it. It is a beautiful act. Is your whole day about what you're eating and what you're not eating? Um, no, Pretty much. We, we enjoy eating healthy, you know, like... We don't crave unhealthy food because um, we're kind of in a routine since we were kids. Our mom always taught us to eat good, so we really enjoy like a good salad or a good piece of fish or a good steak. So as long as you and we, yeah, we try and we try and hit the gym as well as much as we can. We, go, we both go like a lot, you know, to the gym and stuff, like different gyms, but mm. we both go a lot. We didn't work um, like all the time. We've, uh, we've always tried to find an opportunity to perform, whether it's at like a, when we were kids, we used to like at the local park or like a little events and things and it kind of grew from there you know we did a little yeah it kind of grew from there just bits and pieces people saw us we tried to like work at some nightclubs and things you know to get practice because practice makes perfect so we've always tried to like you know we street, street performed as well to get experience i remember when we used to out, like outside the mobile phone stores and stuff like back in the back in the day and it, it, yeah. yeah shopping center that's like mcdonald's and whatever so we just tried to get as much experience wherever we could and now we're on like a big stage and like all that experience, all that street performing in the rain, all that performing in the park, like it's, it's, it's for us, it's like, it's, it's really nerve wracking, but we remember where we came from and like we performed like on the street and like our, like our skates like used to break and things. So now it's like such a perform with lights and music and like an mm. air conditioned room. It's like really like um, amazing, like it's really easy compared to what we used to do, you know? And what I love about Absinthe, of course, it's so intimate and brilliant. It's got a lot of people in that Spiegel tent, but of course it feels so intimate. We get close up. On the other end of that scale is the millions and millions of people watching you on America's Got Talent. Is that thrilling to know that you're being beamed into everyone's home on the number one show of the summer? I mean, it's still the biggest show on TV. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, we try not to think about it too much. Like, when we're um, <laughs> yeah. before the show, we're just pretending that it's the audience, the whole Dolby Theatre, we're like, oh, it's just a Dolby, a couple of thousand people, because if you know that everyone in the world could be tuning in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, it, it, it'll, you it, it, I almost passed out just thinking about it. Even, even the concert. judges, I mean, yeah, even having the judges there, it's like when you see the four judges and they're there, and like, you know, like, well, you've done it like in practice, like maybe a hundred times, but as soon as you get on there and you see the judges, like you kind of let go weak. And like you feel like like my sister's like on my head, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't, is there like anyone there? I can't even feel her weight. Like suddenly, uh, there's such an adrenaline rush. It's like I've been, it's like I've got such an adrenaline rush. I can't, I don't even know that she's on my head. I can't. Like it's like super, super strength out of nowhere. But yeah, and my legs are shaking. So it's kind of a, it's such a weird combination. What happens to you when you get out there? It's like you can't prepare for it really ever. Like it's unbelievable. Is there any hope we'll ever get you back in England? I mean, once you're in Vegas, to me, that's the greatest place on earth to be the best entertainer in your field, and that's what you are. And then add into that AGT. I mean, you're through to the semis. You'll probably end up winning it because you're so brilliant. When do we get to see you over here? Because we'd love to have you back. We'd love to come back, yeah. You never say never. I mean, we just we just take every opportunity as it comes, and we just see where it, where, you know, where, where it takes us, and we just follow, like, the path that's given to us but never say never you know hopefully yeah, like we'll be able to perform for you know in England at one maybe point in the future again we'll, uh, we'll open a show in London who knows you know they've opened <laughs> one in, uh, in Sydney you know they've opened 
in LA, you know, why not in London? Who knows what their plans are? It would be amazing. <laughs> in London, but and to go. <laughs> Do either of you miss Birmingham at all? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, home is home is home, you know, like you, home is where the heart is. You can never, you can't choose where your home is. But of course, like Birmingham's our home and uh, we grew up there and it made us who we are today. And, you know, it's a, it's a great city. It's, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, got a lot of amazing people in there. And, you know, like, like I said, we have lots of friends and it, it, it was like the, the defining part of our life. We're in Birmingham and you know, we're, we're still Brummies at heart, you know, we're still Brummies. So that's, that's, that's we'll always be Brummies oh. even if we're in Vegas. Oh, mom's always saying, Birmingham's so beautiful, you have to see it. You know, they've done this. He's always telling us what they're building and what bus stops. They put new bus stops. You yeah. to the road. You but, want yeah, to some, <laughs> someone came to us yes, the other day from England. They were like, you haven't lost your Birmingham accent, have you? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you could be, be here five years. And he was like, you haven't lost your Birmingham accent. This is incredible. So, How long have you both been in Vegas? Because you've both got settled lives now. You're both there living there properly. Because people think when you live in and work in Vegas, you stay in the casinos and go and do your job and then go and eat in buffets that's not the truth at all is it no not at all no um you know it's like a you got a house and like you know a family and stuff and it's um it's actually you know just like a, a regular life but um, i mean you know you could choose to be in the casino but that's more of like you know the bachelor life or whatever but um <laughs> you know yeah we we don't um you know we don't, we don't spend too much time on the strip, but we do try and, like, you know, do, we try and skate. Like, there's, like, a lot of mountains around here and things like that. So we try and skate, like, like on the mountains and do, like, train train out in, like, cool places, you know, because there's a lot of beautiful scenery and the weather's really good, so it's easy for us to skate because it's not raining all the time because you can't really roller skate in the rain. And that's the one sort of problem I had with Birmingham was that it's raining a lot, so we can't, we, we couldn't, like, really skate as much as we wanted because... Mm. It's too wet, you know, so at least it's a little bit drier out here so we can get more practice in, really. We've had one of the yeah. worst summers ever this year. Just tell us about the temperature at the moment in Vegas. Is it still over 100? Oh, yeah, like 110 today. Ugh. Yeah, we, we learned our um, roller skating act down in Birmingham down at the basketball court in our local park. Um, we always used to, like, have to rely on the weather. My mum was like, oh, I think it's going to rain between 5 and 6 today, so we'll go, you know from four to five or from, you know, seven to nine. And it was really, we had to, like, work around the rain to train. We keep the circle that was in the middle of the basketball court. And uh, it was really crazy growing up, like, waiting waiting on but, the rain still. But right, now, but right now, the weather in Vegas is, like, over 100 every day, and it's, like, oh. super dry. So, you know, yeah, I mean, the, the weather, is, I do like the weather. That's, that's one thing uh, I do like. It's a shame there isn't a middle ground, really, where you could not have the rain. We've had pouring rain here today, and it's 15 degrees. I've actually got the heating on. I'm serious. Oh, wow. uh, two last questions. Um, how's Mel B doing? Because, of course, you're on AGT with Mel, and uh, we love her very much over here. Have you had much to do with her? She's just a lovely person, really, and she's a role model for a lot of American, uh, a lot of people out here. Like, my, my wife, she uh, absolutely loves Mel B, and she's like, oh, my God, she's like... You know, a hero to me, you know what I mean? So Mel B's like a hero for so many people out here. She's such a role model for everyone. And she's such a lovely person as well. So, I mean, you know, that's all I can say about her, really. Yeah, yeah she's she fine. She pointed out a few about, like, she lost her dad recently, and she's like, guys, I don't know what you're going through. We, I don't understand. It is just it's something you never get over. She's, you know, she understands everything. She's a mom as well, you know, and, yeah, she's super supportive. Everything she says, we know that it's going to be How kind. towards us. Yeah, that's lovely. And my final question to you, Billy, when she's holding on to your beard and spinning around you at 750 miles an hour and 800 people are watching you twice nightly at absinthe, is there any way of describing the pain? Yeah, I mean, I would, uh, the only way I could describe it is uh, at a, a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst is an 11. Right. <laughs> 11 out of 10. Is, is there some sibling rivalry that you rather enjoy that, Emily? Um, <laughs> I'm going to well, say you know, no. <laughs> I mean, we bicker, you know, we're, we're the brother and sister, we just always bicker and we're always at each other. Mm. You can't spend too much, like, you know, we're just like normal brother and sister, you know, it's like, we're good in small doses around each other and then it gets too much. So mm. like an hour is my maximum, I can be around her. Yeah, so like, oh, you smell, he'll send me a text before the show, make sure you shower, you think. I'm like, oh, Billy, uh, <laughs> Thank like, God it's such a short act. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
I have been really lucky in this business to meet a lot of people who are incredible. There's Brandon down there at Zoomanity and there's you at Absinthe. I think you are two of the most incredible people who have ever worked in show business. I think your act is remarkable and people need to get and see it quick because it's incredible. You can go on YouTube and put in Billy and Emily and it'll come up from AGT. Those videos are amazing. And what a legacy to have those around forever because they make you look great, don't they? As great as you are without all the lights and stuff. Just yeah, the, I mean, the, you know, the camera works great, and it's just, it's great that it can be recorded and stuff, and they're like, you know, it's really, it's really amazing that you can get it all on high-quality cameras, because I don't want to, you know, the iPhone videos aren't quite the same, you know what I mean, when you, when you film yourself on the iPhone, it's like 8 megapixels, it's not quite the same quality, you know, mm. when you look like a little ant on it, so, you know, um, yeah, like, you know, we, we try and record everything on our phones when we rehearse, but it doesn't look as good from like 25 feet away, yeah. and you're about, like, you know, a centimeter tall. I have huge admiration for both of you. Stay delicious, won't you, Emily? I promise. I'm begging you. And I suppose you too, Billy. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, I don't, I don't feel like that. I'll just, just, try and, just try and get on with it, basically, you know? It's an incredible act. Congratulations. I'll be back in October, and I'm going to come and see you again at Absinthe at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Catch AGT on NBC through the summer. And uh, Billy and Emily, you can find out more by going to at Billy and Emily Official on Facebook and uh, all the other places as well, Twitter. And thank you so much for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.